Well, hello, and welcome to Who Dares Wars TV. I am your host, Mike V, and here we are with a um, another episode. Mm. I think we're in April. Are we in April, March? I don't know. Anyway, it is um, 2021. I know that much. So we are the, the the hours have clicked forward, which was a truly thrilling experience having a toddler and working early mornings. That was not fun. Um, but so we're now in, the sun was on the way, the, the sunlight is streaming from the window. There was vicious rumor, potentially, you know, we, we might have the cusp of potentially sitting around a tables again, playing board games within a month or two, possibly. So, we shall see. I'm gonna keep some optimism, optimism on this, but yeah, we'll see. Anyway, what have we been playing? Yes, so uh, some games, uh, we're, we're once again uh, firmly in the realms of virtual gaming. Um, so Friday, the Friday crew uh, assembled myself, uh, Robbie from the Sunday night crew, um, Ben, uh, Bob, and Paul, or Captain AP, I mean, my goodness. Um, so we gathered around, uh, much contention had been, what should we play? We waited for Ben to arrive. Um, and uh, there had been, uh, Micro Machines was a game that we loved. Uh, as a group, we used to play it often around a console. I think it was the old uh, GameCube or something. I can't remember. We used to sit and play Micro Machines, all of us. And uh, we loved that. Stupid game. Mario Kart, similar sort of thing. So I, I looked on Steam and that and actually found uh, a Super Circuit Racing, I think it's called. It's in, still in uh, kind of alpha stage. It's essentially Micro Machines, but actually with like proper kind of physics to it and like proper racing. Kind of sounded cool. So I floated that. Um, and I know Bob would buy it because he's a bit of petrol head. So yeah, he'd come on board. Ben's a con bone of contention because he uh, is running, uh, I, I think he's games on a cornflake packet, I'm not sure. Um, we have pointed out that he could probably buy something more, more suitable to play on, but he's tired. Um, so there's this the whole thing of bone of contention with Ben where he won't play Steam games at the moment because basically he's, he's got a stupid computer. Um, Bob picked this up, really enjoyed it, said it was really good. We looked, uh, it was knowing the Ben problem, we had to look up some other stuff. So I started rooting through Steam and uh, multiplayer party type games, uh, which led me um, to a, uh, <laughs> to, to down a rabbit hole. Um, <laughs> so, um, yeah. <laughs> so I Trump stumbled across um, genital jousting. Which is this. This is John. John has an ordinary life. Getting up in the morning. Getting clean. Getting dressed. Staying fashionable. The thing that's difficult about being John isn't trying to fit in. Isn't the danger of paper cuts. Oh, that must sting. It isn't staying motivated in a job that will grind you down and disrespect you. No. What's difficult about being John is finding love. Oh, how desperately he wants to find love. Real, beautiful, lasting, sweaty love. But John is a dick. And he does, well, dick things. Just... So many dick things. Found it. It was. It's on the. I think it still is on the Steam sale. It was one pound sixty nine, and I, I just went. Oh well. I, I, how can I resist that? Um, and and I bought, bought it. Where subsequently Bob was straight in on that, uh, and Robbie. Uh, Ben's not yet come online. We've start playing with our willies on, on <laughs> gentle to jousting. Ben comes on and he's like an angry parent. Um, he was not amused by gentle to jousting. I mean, it's got willies in it, bum holes. Uh, I mean, the highlight of the whole experience was Bob exclaiming, I am fucking myself. Um, it is pure oil. It's, I, I, you know, I was equal parts. I didn't know really what I'm like. I don't even know how you score points in this fucking game. There's a story mode we've covered, but I was equally appalled, repulsed, just what the fuck is happening? Uh, <laughs> so that happened. Um, 
knobs, penises, bum holes. I, if you fancy the, an evening, a light evening of a couple of hours of inserting yourself deeply into your friends, not steep. Um, well, there's that as an option. Uh, we've subsequently not played much of that, so it's been told us off. Um, then we say into, well, we had to go to Borgo Marina. So, um, Ben was now foul, foul mood. So before we played Borgo Marina to, to, to calm him down, because he's obviously, he's, he's not, not been on board with the, the whole willy thing. So, um, so we had a crack at Room 25. It's a beta in on uh, Board Game Arena. I love Room 25. It's a hidden traitory type game based kind of a little bit on the movie. I've covered this many times on here. It's a great game um, on the movie Cube where there's a bunch of prisoners trying to break out and a lot of the rooms are around. Well, there's a whole load of rooms randomized, some of which will kill you instantly. Um, and the idea is there is some hidden guards amongst you. They're trying to stop you getting out to the exit and you can m this, uncover this big map and there's all sorts of crazy shit happens. Um, and it's fun. It makes me chuckle every time I play it. Um, and uh, so off we went. Um, I was a bad guy, of course. Um, uh, and it subsequently came to light that Robbie was a bad guy as well because within the second round, um, he had murdered Ben. <laughs> <laughs> so Ben's already in a foul mood. Now he's been kicked out of the first, like the second round of Room 25, they sat there. Um, and it just went badly wrong from there. Uh, Paul ended up throwing himself face first into a mortal chamber, which incinerated himself. And I was in the process of secretly moving up towards Bob to um, push him into an un unpleasant death. But Paul's suicide meant we won the game. Bob ranted again, because Bob's got a whole history of me in games. Um, doing traitorous things. There's a game of diplomacy we played, probably now on 10 years ago now. The last game we ever played diplomacy. Um, I was in the alliance with Bob. Uh, diplomacy, if you don't know, is kind of like risk on steroids. Uh, it's m far more kind of nuanced version of risk. Essentially, you, you submit orders every round. You write them down, or potentially you can do it on the app now, I guess. But you write them down um, about what your moves are. You can support other units to get across sea. Your ships allow you to do that. Um, so you're kind of working in tandem. If you're in an alliance with someone that you're kind of secretly chatting about what your orders are going to be in, you know, I will support your troops to get across this this ocean to and then you can attack that so there's it's definitely a lot more nuance and tactics to it um it's a it's a solid game it's a known of this game that can break break relationships destroy them um and we played it a few times me and bob were in the semi-alliance we were kind of in russia sort of northern europe um attacking the states he had quite a large area i think of russia that sort of area around there and I was kind of supporting him underneath there. And I was using my larger fleet to um, allow him to launch this attack on the, on the Americas, which was Ben, I think, and Robbie or whatever. So this was all going on. This has been going on for rounds and rounds and rounds. Um, and essentially, I'd been kind of secretly in the back of my head, because this is how I function, um, working out when was the best opportunity to betray Bob um, and what would be the most damaging version to do it, to essentially take over his homelands um, and leave him stranded in this this fight in Americas. Um, and the time rolled around to the point where he had forced all his troops over there and more of them were all over there. The fight was kind of on a knife edge. We were on about withdrawing his troops at this point in time because he had committed everything at this point and I was gonna bring my fleet round to get him all out of there to hold a line and then prepare for the second wave and all good fun. Uh, obviously that never happened because what I did was I diverted all my fleets up to my troops to allow me to attack Bob. Um, leaving him stranded to be decimated in the Americas. And that's exactly what happened. And there's this delightfully delicious and uh, probably nervous moment when the orders are being read out. The cheat's there and, and someone are running for the orders. And usually we used to say someone, like, you're in charge, you know, Ben would be, he's the adult, so he'd be there reading them out and we'd be moving them around on the map as this was happening. And slowly this betrayal kind of unveiled towards Bob as he could see his orders he'd placed failing because those units weren't there and me maneuvering my troops to position to decimate his homelands um and he lost his shit <laughs> lost his fucking shit <laughs> yeah that happened so that was so we never played diplomacy again following that um and it still comes up to this day is brought up along with c4 which during c4 on one of our podcasts we covered this in great detail but there was uh it's a pvp game you're floating around in boats you're doing stuff there's a point in the game you can go on a quest bob had gone on this quest and found these artifacts deep in this indiana jonesian temple um loaded them on his ship buffed his you know he was going to get all this good stuff and he'd spent the entire evening just doing this 
Um, he's finally gone through this epic quest, victorious with his artifacts, these mystical, wonderful artifacts he'd found. And he'd set sail back to his homeland, and I sunk his ships, and they'd gone, and he'd lost all the stuff he collected. And he very nearly flipped the table at that point in time. Um, and again, we kind of did it for shits and giggles. So, uh, room 25, that happened. I was outed as a traitor. Bob, again, lost his shit. I didn't, I'd done much that time. Um, it's, it's fun. I love a hidden traitor game, don't you? Uh, so that, that did go well. We played Q-Birds, because that's recently been added to it. I've never played it before. It is kind of a drafting game, but you're set collecting game with these little birds. Um, it's very simple. Very, it's like a fillery type game, it feels to me. Quite nice graphically and all that. We were playing that. Um, then Paul lost the plot. Um, apparently he was literally like, fuck this game. Uh, <laughs> um, had a massive rant. I'm leaving, he quit out the game or didn't quit. He dropped off. He's like, I'm fucking not playing this game. I hate this game. It doesn't, he, he, Paul is a creature that functions trying to calculate every, every conceivable option from playing a card. And any card, any game that adds random to that, there was clearly no way you could project what all the many options were. Um, but I, 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 mm. So anyway, he ranted, five minute rant about how he was never playing this game again. He was done on it, fuck it, I'm not finishing my turn, I'm not finishing my game. Table flip, essentially, moment. Um, and then the game ended. <laughs> so, <laughs> so that was good. And so we didn't play any more of that. Um, and then uh, we started playing Takedo, Ben's option. He, Want to put Tokaido on? For the record, Tokaido is a game I hate, and I and I leave it there. Really, there's much else to say. I could rant for 25 minutes about it. It's it's just pointless. Um, and um, and then I was so so heartened and relieved that Robbie and then Bob and everyone after literally a round of it went, "Why are we playing this?" <laughs> <laughs> so Tokaido was junked. Ben at this point was incensed, um, and uh, and I can't even remember what else we did after that. So that was Friday night. That went well. Um, and that's that, that's what we played. Sunday we played a bit full guys, a bit of Hearthstone, a bit of Valheim. I think that was it. Just that stuff. Um, new update for Hearthstone drops, I think, in the next couple of days, so I'm quite interested about that. Let's do some news. So you would clearly be living under a large rock to have not noticed the whole Suez Canal thing. There is a, and it's probably gonna have a knockback on Kickstarters. There is a big ship that was somehow going down the Suez Canal that somehow, I don't know how this happened, but he basically turned himself that way and, and blocked the canal. <laughs> and it's chipping on the other end is just, it's just like, you don't want to be that captain at that point in time. It's so, um, there's been a monumental effort to try and ship the ship. The, the, the news that caught me was, <laughs> that made me chuckle the most, was this sex ass shortage. There was apparently millions of, uh, of love bums trapped on this boat. Who knew? Um, and apparently there's panic buying across Europe um, and everywhere at the, at the fear of the, the sex bum shortage. Um, which apparently the guy who has his bums, his, his sex bums trapped on the uh, Suez Canal boat, um, is the same guy who suffered awfully from supporting Brexit and then finding Brexit affected his whole bum pumping uh, business. So that's a shame for him, isn't it? Um, so if you're waiting for the delivery of your of your sex bum, then just be aware it is held up, along with possibly some Kickstarter stuff. Um, so that's something we look forward to, really, isn't it? <laughs> um, then we move on to something else. So, Robinson Crusoe is on GameFound at the moment. I don't even knew this. I made a cup this last week. Totally forgot. So, um, Robinson Crusoe is onto GameFound at the moment. It's got, I think, another week or two to run on it. Uh, it is a project to release a collector's edition of it, it says. Um, for the record, Robinson Crusoe is a game I, I do love Robson Crusoe, and I probably might do a video review it, because I did a text one I wrote a while ago. Um, it's a, it's a co-op game, it can be played solo. I've played it actually quite a lot of it solo. Um, it is a game of you essentially trying to survive a desert island. There is numerous scenarios in it. There's a very clever design in that there's all different sort of scenarios could be played for different challenges of what you achieve. But the base scenario is literally you trying to set up a camp, build a fire, and signal a ship and get off the island. And simple as that. And that alone <laughs> is many variables, um, which would normally result in you, your death. It's a great game, cracking game. You've never played it and you like a co op type game and you like the idea of surviving, that survivor thing. Um, it's got some really cool mechanisms in there. There's these decks that uh, control various, depending on what your tasks are you're trying to achieve. And they bring up cards. And what can happen is these cards 
can lead to choices you make on the cards where you might go and I'm going to go and um, saw down that tree. And depending how your dice rolls and how that works in your favor or not, those cards can go back into the decks to reappear um, and you'll put tokens on your character to show you've done well or failed at those ones. And they can pop back up. Um, so you might saw down a tree, it falls on you, you break your leg, you, you survive, you strap your leg up, and then within three rounds, there's a faint smell of almonds. <laughs> and, and, uh, and then the leg's got to come off. And then, so I love it. It's really thematically great. It's a Euro-y feel type game, but it's got a real thematic -y Thing for it, and I, I love it. And I had a bunch of expansions to it, and actually sent me some stuff for it. Mystery Tales, which actually I, I it's a campaigny kind of play mood for it, which I need to play. Um, and um, and I've blinged it out as best I could over the years from picking up promos and stuff they've been available. Um, so I would wholeheartedly at this point I will say, if you've never played Robinson Crusoe, and any of that sounds tantalizing, it is is a, a fantastic game. It was marred in its first and second editions with god awful rule books. Um, but it's subsequently been fixed in what I think was the third edition game out from Portal. If you can find it hunted down, it's a cracking game, it's real. I, I strongly recommend it if you're a fan of any of that sort of stuff. There is on GameFound the collector's edition as, as launched on it of Robson Crusoe. Uh, and amongst this stuff that came out with this collector's edition, which includes a mini for the um, for the camp, which is kind of cool because it's kind of modular. As you build your camp, you actually, this mini will represent it. It's kind of cool. And then a bunch of minis for the characters, which pointless it feels at this point in time because I don't really know how they can function with that but whatever. A couple of things that really enticed me to this was number one there was this whole um, tutorial pack um, which was worked along with the guys behind Jaws of the Lion uh, the guy who worked on that as that as to not a tutorial kind of mini campaign to teach the game and the one thing with Robertson is it's a bear to teach um, and it's often the reason why it doesn't sit at the table very often for me is you get it out, and especially as I've got the older rule books and various play wise, it's like, what am I doing? How do I this work again? There's a lot of moving parts to it. And once you know what you're doing, it's fine. You can play it really easily. But So the possibility of this teach and learn and play tutorial thing was really great because I thought, oh, yeah, brilliant. That will probably see me getting that to the table a lot more if I can do that, especially as that's a, we're playing it but we're learning it. I, I like the sound of that. And the book of Adventures was um, mooted, which is a book of scenarios. Um, I think there's like 80 odd or something in there. Uh, all these scenarios, you open the book and you can play one of these scenarios. Again, really great. Lots of, lots of extra goodles of good stuff added to the game. So I was on board for them. Definitely for them. Um, if there was a if there was a upgrade pack thing, brilliant. I'm on board for that. Um, it gets me some of the good stuff. Um, the book and all this stuff, brilliant. It's launched. And uh, and it's expensive. <laughs> I think about 115 euros will buy you the collector's edition, which is essentially the most recent iteration of Robson Crusoe with the minis and all the bling and all the stuff. And that's kind of uh, that. And there's various ways of mixing it. The Book of Adventures on its own is about $30, which seems quite expensive. 30 euros, sorry, which it still seems quite expensive. I mean, it's a big book possibly, but it's quite steep. You can't get the tutorial thing without buying it, I think, with a bolted on bit with the expansion -y bit. I don't know, but that is still 80 odd dollars for that to get that. You can't buy it separately. You can buy the upgrade pack for 50 odd dollars or euros, which gets really steep because really I don't want the minis. Um, and I don't actually really want the bigger box. I don't really want the insert. What I just want is quality life improvements. And not all of that is in that pledge. I really quite like the idea of the tutorial thing, but that's not even available as a separate thing and only be bought in the $85 thing. Um, so the, from personally, for someone who owns the base game, the old, old version, must admit, um, and some of the expansion, a lot of the expansion content, there is nothing here um, that is, is, is shouting to me because all the stuff I want is behind this expensive paywall. They've been... Offering um, stretch goals every day, various stuff that is spread amongst all the different bits. Um, but that's all quite expensive. I mean, they don't feel like stretch goals because looking at the pricing of the stuff, you're already paying for that stuff. Um, that's not a an illusion for anyone. Um, I love Portal. I love Ignacy. I love his games. Um, but this, for me, as an old consumer of that stuff and having it, there's nothing here that represents any kind of value for me. I would love to be in on this. I would love to get that tutorial thing if it was reasonably priced. I'd love the book, but it's just expensive. and There's postage to come on this. Um, so, yeah, I don't see any value for money for me, personally. Um, I'm at the point of, you know, the miniatures I'm actually cold on. They look gorgeous. They're done by Awoken Realms. 
But um, I don't see where they really function in the game other than uh, the nice looking thing, which kind of as mini is, and don't get me wrong, I love a mini. Um, but, and they look gorgeous, but I don't functionally see really what they add. There's a resin um, component upgrade pack. It's kind of nice, I've got the, cut, the wooden components, I might stick with that. Um, but yeah, the, most, the, the two things I was kind of interested in is the book, and that's quite pricey, um, and the tutorial adventure thing which I can only get if I buy it bolted into this on a bit. Um, so yeah, there's lots of options, but none of the options there are the stuff I want to build, and all of it is expensive. By all means, if you don't have Robs and Crusoe, take a look at it. I would say personally, unless you've got the spare cash, just buy the retail version of Robs and Crusoe, uh, and maybe wait and see what of this comes out later. I suspect that some of it will go, definitely come to retail, possibly at a more reasonable price. Um, and maybe even some of the extra bits, I'm sure is probably gonna turn up on the portal website later on to be picked up, maybe. I can't recommend it at that price. It just seems extortionally expensive for what it is. Um, it looks nice, but the anniversary was pretty cool and it's uh, they've not graphically enhanced anything else. The upgrade pack, I don't understand. It doesn't seem to offer me any of the stuff I really want. Um, so at this point in time, I love Oswald Crusoe, go and buy the retail version. I don't see a reason for backing this unless you've got a lot of cash burning a hole in your pocket and you really want to get all the quality life stuff, most of which, looking at it, don't need. It is nice, some of it, but you don't need. So that's Robson Crusoe on GameFound. Um, go and have a look. But that's my recommendation on that. Uh, then FFG have, have put out another trailer. They're pushing now. August is the release date for Descent 3rd Edition. I can't remember what the tagline is for it. Um, personally, where I stand, I've never played the first edition of Descent. Robbie owns, in fact, I own, well, I have his copy of Descent 2nd Edition there. And it's only the base game. We never played any of uh, extra bits. I never got on with Descent. Two reasons for that. Number one, I'm not a big, huge fan of the Tyranoff world from ffg it's very v magnolia fantasy world it's very mm, and so none of that really drew me in to their to that world um and secondly uh, with kind of bad experiences playing descent is that ben was the gm when we played it um and and he never pulled his punches never it, it, was, it was just a punishing playthrough and he really kind of uh, the whole thing of descent was you laid out the map you knew wherever it was and you kind of trundled through and you played that um, what I liked about what I thought was Imperial Assault, which was kind of like the follow-on from Descent, used the base Descent model, tweaked it, obviously through Star Wars in lightsabers and space wizards and stuff, which is always helps, um, but also uh, had the options of various things. You had the one versus many again, the GM playing it. But the cool thing about that, especially, is the maps had hidden stuff on it. You didn't see all the stuff as it happened initially, and you were kind of searching through and finding stuff through the missions. And the the, the uh, Sith player, the bad guy, which has predominantly been me, could kind of play it a GME role. And if you pulled your punches in certain places and, and had story options, you could tweak the game and play around. It was a really great experience, really good Star Wars experience, one I fucking love. Um, and I, it's one I do want to get back to the table when we can. The Sunday Night Crew, other than Robbie, have never played it and have been gagging to play it. And I've been saying, no, we won't play it until I've painted it. Um, so I'm just finishing off the Times of Lothal, which I think is going to be our first version we'll play of it when we eventually get our lockdown. At some point, we'll, we'll get into that. Um, and I can't wait, because I really love that. Star Wars. Yay! Uh, anyway, The Sin, third edition. So there we go. That's I'm coming into it going, hmm. Um, they buff the art up. And it looks awful. Um, the minis is okay. Um, now, my big issue is number one, I think the price point on this is $170. They're taglining this as the definitive dungeon crawl. Well, we've got Gloomhaven, we've got Frosthaven coming, there's a bunch of under dungeon crews have been on Kickstarter. And this is only being called essentially Act One. There's two more of these bad boys to drop. So that doesn't feel very definitive to start with, is that? I'm looking at it, it's got a Kickstarter price. I could buy Gloomhaven and have a lot of change left over. Um, there's two more bits of this to come. We have to presume that they're gonna be at a similar price point. So now we're looking at three, four, nearly a $500 game. What the fuck? Um, it's not got the one versus mini mode, it's only uh, via app. I liked that you could have a player against you in, in Imperial Assault. So number one, not having that option is a little bit, uh, uh, and it just doesn't look like the value there. It doesn't look like, I mean, there's some cardboard furniture, there's some minis in there, but it doesn't, I don't see any value. I, I don't see a definitive dungeon call for stars. The art looks shockingly bad. We haven't got any play details really yet, but I mean, I'm presuming it's gonna take a 
crib note of the Eldritch Horror and Journeys in Middle-earth, which I thought Eldritch was the better of the two of them. Obviously, Descent and Imperial Assault had the app mode in that as well, so it's going to pull some of that in. I Nothing here is exciting me. Nothing here is exciting me. FFG seemed to have really stumbled the last few years. I mean, there was the golden age when they were tied up with GW Games Workshop and they were pumping out stuff um, like Forbidden Stars. And, and the, you know, there was a bunch of stuff coming out of that period of time. They had Imperial Assault. They had their earlier stuff. They just Their, their catalog seems to have streamlined down to mostly some mini stuff and just doesn't seem to be that innovative or some core interesting things coming up for them of late it's just it's a bit dull um this personally for me is a total pass i, I don't see anything here that is as great and it's ridiculously fucking expensive it doesn't look that great there's some nice minis um Ah, uh, we'll see. I mean, FFG have had the period of time where they can essentially print money. Whether that time is now past, because they tend to be kind of hitting this at a Kickstarter price, but they're missing the point of there isn't a value there that I can see um, at all. And, you know, so I don't know. But personally, for me, I'm out at this point. I don't see anything there that's in the least bit tantalise me. There is no, nay a, nay a throb in anywhere for that. So, um, so we're going to pass that by. Because, yeah. Uno movie. They're making a movie of Uno. Apparently Uno sold lots. Um, so, okay. Uno? How are you going to make that? Well, apparently it's going to be an action heist comedy set in the underground hip-hop world of Atlanta. Okay. Um, so there we go. That's the unit movie. Can't wait for that to drop. Um, so that's the news. Uh, that's all of that out of the way. We've covered all of that. Willies and bums and stuff and things. Um, well, what have I been doing? So to be fair, other than that, what have I been actually up to is not a lot really. I've been kind of working a bit and busy and running around. Um, we, me and the beloved, watched the final few episodes of the Stand, the new version of the Stand TV show. Um, as a whole, it was all right. Um, the Stand, if you don't know, is Stephen King's essentially the Lord of the Rings. And I'm currently in the process of actually rereading the, the version of it at the moment. Um, and now I'm really there going, Jesus, this is really Lord of the Rings, Stephen King land. Uh, <laughs> there's some like, you know, the bad guy is almost like Sauron at certain points in time. There's the trash can man, if you don't know the story, but the trash can man, essentially he's Gollum. Um, uh, so yeah, it really is. Watch it anyway. So it, it's, it, it's not so subtle thing on that, but it's a cracking, I quite enjoyed the stand is that eventually the good guys and the bad guys, very Lord of Ringsy kind of traveling across post-apocalyptic America after a super flu has wiped them out. TV show, just they made the decision um, on the TV show to basically play start off crack off in the middle of the story where everyone's gathered and then flash back the various main characters journeys to this point, but kind of very abbreviated versions of it. Um, and I think that what makes uh, the stand is great is that kind of that, that Lord of the Rings journey as they travel across this land. You learn so much about the characters you until they eventually all meet at this point and then we go from there. And this doesn't do that, a flashback's it, and I felt that it suffered because of that. And I didn't really have an issue, I, I would have embraced it and go with the idea of it's doing it. But those characters never felt very, very rounded. Um, none of them really do, other than Harold is like a writer of the thing and is kind of a bad guy in it. But he's kind of the most, almost fully realised of the characters in there, um, in the whole of that. And it just seems a missed opportunity um, in regards to that. It looks gorgeous. Um, it kind of recovered itself a little bit last few episodes to a point ends in the new epilogue that's been written by King himself which still doesn't really fix all of the issues of it there is a deus ex machina problem with the story and it's still there um, it was okay it was alright there was moments in there were quite cool um, choices you made that you don't know I don't think the changing the flashback thing worked at all really so in spite of that I'm actually I've ordered the 90s version of it which was only a four part um, with different cast, Ghost Ness is in it, I think Rob Lowe's in it, Molly Ringwald's in it, uh, blah, 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 blah. I have vague recollections of it. It's probably aged, not great, but I'm going to give it a blast because I just have interest, really. Um, so there's that, and then we've just started watching The Terror, which is a show I wanted to watch for a long time. It came out in the AMC in the States a couple of years ago now, but it hasn't been freely available anywhere 
over here, um, and I can't be asked to be downloading shit. Um, so I, it's finally aired on the BBC a, about a month back. So I've got it all saved on the old old the old Sky Plus job E to watch. We watched the first episode of it. If you don't know what the terror is, it's based on the Dan Simmons novel. It's a fictionalised account of the voyage of Sir Captain Sir John, someone. Francis, I think it was. He took an expedition in the 1800s across the Arctic to confirm the existence of the Northwest Passage, which is this route across the top through the Arctic to get to the States. Um, and it's they were never seen again. Um, so this fictionalizes what happened to them. Um, they get trapped in pack ice uh, and then they're stranded there, frozen in, and something, something is out. What the fuck happened? So yeah, the camera stopped filming randomly right in the middle of me just talking nonsense um so yeah the terror uh, just to catch up yeah so the terror um i watched the first episode obviously it deals with this supernatural bit cthulhu-ish maybe they think there's some lovecrafty and cosmic horror in there um and it's kind of this fictionalized version of what potentially happened to these guys and what they encountered out there in the in this arctic wastes um this is i don't think is fully aware of what's coming I'm quite looking forward to it. I say it looks gorgeous. It's a stunningly production. Great cast of um, characters there. There's Kieran Hines is in there. Um, and uh, Richard Harris's son, Jared Harris, is in there. Oh, he's a great actor. Um, so really good cast of British thefts doing their thing. Uh, all going to die in a particularly horrible way. So I'm looking forward to that. We're going to dig into that the rest of the week. Um, once I finish, I've got a few lates coming up. So after that, we're going to dive into that. Um, I watched last night was Amsterdam. Um, it's uh, a movie from the 80s. I remember seeing it in the 80s. And I saw it. it was on, uh, I just randomly stumbled across it and on Amazon, I think. It's an 80s set in Amsterdam uh, from the director Dick Mass, who uh, is a Dutch director who, who produces a lot of exploitation-y genre affairs. Yeah, uh, all sorts of movies. He did The Lift, um, which is a movie. I went to um, Holland as a child for a school trip in the 80s, and I recall remember seeing posters everywhere for The Lift um, and it just being like, oh, um, I've never actually seen the movie. But, um, but Dick Mass has produced that. He, it was his first movie I think he directed, um, and he directed a bunch of other stuff. But his probably crowning glory is Amsterdam, um, which is a serial killer set movie in the canals of Amsterdam. And you've got a guy in a scuba suit uh, going around basically swimming in the canals, coming up and murdering people in variously horrific ways. Uh, it's a weird mix. Um, it's, it's a panache. It's, a, it's, a, it's kind of like a loving ode to Jaws. Um, there's lots of there's music. It's very Jawsy and um, lots of shots, that sort of camera sat in the water level shots. Um, and there's just outright lifts from Jaws in it. Um, and it's it, it never slows down. I mean, it's a movie; it just moves at a very quick pace. Um, it's quirky. It's 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 funny. Uh, it's horrific. Uh, it's a bizarre mashmash of stuff, um, and it has some really cool stunts in it. Uh, which none of it's sped up. It's all like filmed shots in real life. So there's cars hair assing around um the streets of amsterdam and uh, there's a fantastic speedboat chase which is again as i say it's it's not sped up it is happening in real time and it's some fucking good stuff in there really for what they're doing and i believe the lead actor whose name now escapes me the minute was involved because he was driving the boat because you do that you know um was in hospital for like three weeks because they crashed a boat and he broke ribs and stuff and all sorts of things um but yeah it is i mean it's not really going to challenge your who done it for you kind of Pretty early on, we're going to kind of work out probably who it is is behind a lot of it. Although it does throw a few curveballs at you towards the end. Um, but as a just as a weird genre detective -y, uh, horror thing, um, it's a very unique. Uh, if you like Jaws, there's a lot of Jaws references to catch in it, um, and it's this very lovingly produced. Um, it is. It shows its age now, but um, it's very exploitation-y. Um, but yeah, it's. It's. I was really glad to catch up on it again. It, I remember seeing it many years ago, many years ago when it first came out, probably in the late eighties, early nineties, um, and I'd completely forgotten about it to be honest with you until I saw it and I was like, oh, um, it's available on DVD from Shameless. I'm, I should put a DVD and I could wave it around. Um, I got it picked up for under a tenner. Uh, if you are in any way enticed by that, it, it tell you what you know. They don't make them like this anymore. Um, it moves fast, it's funny, it's weird, it's quirky, some interesting characters. Um, well, 
just, yes, they don't make them like that anymore. World War Fountain Down, I think, is uh, Amsterdam, if that is any way of interest to you. Anyway, right, I've gone on an awful lot. Um, I'm not covered a great deal. <laughs> but there, there we go, that is the, there we are, the end of March is rolling around now, we're about just to come out of it. Just a quick um, update on a few things. Number one, launching tonight, hoping that this video goes out today, on Tuesday, I think it is. Um, Charlie it will be launching uh, Explosion High, his, uh, his first Kickstarter, his comic. Um, if you follow Charlie's stuff on the Who Does Rolls, spelt Rolls, R-O-L-E-S, um, RPG stuff, then he's mentioned it on there, I've mentioned it on here. Uh, he's, he's a very talented writer, it looks really cool. That's one to look at if you can support that. That launches, as I say, tonight. Um, I'm at work, so I'll try and tweet it when I'm at work. Um, aside from that, obviously, you can go to the website, who does roles, you can see more of Charlie's writing there, these RPG content and bits and pieces, and all sorts of old articles, including that Robson Crusoe doc, um, article I wrote, the review I wrote. And um, that's that, really. Uh, Stay safe out there, um, look after yourselves. Hopefully, maybe, potentially, there is light at the end of this tunnel um, and we might be out of this before the year is out. Who knows? Uh, but for the time being, stay safe, stay well, look after yourselves, go and play with willies and stuff and bums and things. Like, that's enough of that. Um, I've been Mike B, this has been Who Does Rolls. Thanks for tuning in, I'll uh, catch you up uh, soon. I've got some more videos to drop actually. I'm doing another list video, five games I love, five games I hate, that will be coming up maybe this week if I can get it out. I have filmed bits of it if the bloody camera's not fucked up. Um, and some other bits and pieces I'm working on as well, some other bits, mainly list stuff, because what else can we do? Cool, thank you very much. Um, I've been Mike B, this has been it. I've said this four times, I'm now fucking going. Goodbye.